All right, so the goal of this project originally was to see if we could get cover crops to grow in a dry land setting. Um, and so you'll notice here and on the next slide, we planted four seed mixes of cover crops. There's two cool season mixes and two warm season mixes. Um, our cool season mix, seed mix one, which is right here next to where I am, was where it was planted uh, last year. Um, it's a forage barley and a forage pea. And then if you go down to the next sign, what was planted last year in that area was uh, oats, forage pea, deep root radish, and bulb turnip. Um, and then our two warm season mixes are the third and fourth posts. Um, and they were, seed mix three was sorghum, sedan, grass, uh, leaf turnip, and sandpoint. And then seed mix four was millet, teff, buckwheat, phacelia, and sun hemp. And so like I said, we just wanted to see if they would grow the first year, kind of how they would react um, in this area. And they did all come up very well. Um, and so uh, we took canopy cover estimates of those um, late July last year um, to, to kind of compare them to each other. Um, and we found that, as you'll see here in our graph, the green bars are the cover crops. You'll see that seed mix one and seed mix two, those were our cool season mixes. They did provide more cover than our warm season mixes um, when compared to bare ground and the other species that were present. And just a note on that, the other species included both weeds and some desirable plants that were there that were not seeded with our cover crop mixes. Um, and so another note on this is our warm season mixes, they didn't provide a lot of cover at this time of year when we uh, collected this data. However, um, later in the summer and even into the late fall, a lot of the um, warm season species such as the sor sorghum sedan grass came up really well, provided lots of cover. They were just a little bit later getting going. Um, and if so, we move to our next graph here. Uh, we also wanted to compare forage. Um, and so how many pounds per acre were each of these cover crop species providing? Um, and once again, our cool season mixes provided a higher amount than our warm season mixes. And once again, we took this data in early August. And so it skewed a little bit because a lot of our warm seasons seed mixes or the species in those seed mixes came up later and provided a lot more uh, biomass later on in the year. Um, we also looked at term, two different types of termination for these. We grazed half of each uh, plot and mowed the other half. And so if you're looking out across this, there is, um, there's, three, there's three blocks and then the front half of this first block here was grazed, the back half was mowed the front half of the next plot was grazed, the back half was mowed, and then on the very last block, the back half was grazed and the front half was mowed. And you'll kind of be able to see some of these differences here very visibly. Uh, you'll notice some of the forage peas out in the front half of this, there's not a lot of them. Um, if you look just beyond that, there is a lot of them. And that's the direct line between our mows and grade termination. Um, the mowed half, or the grazed half, excuse me, was what was grazed by our sheep and they seem to have pulled stuff up a lot better than, than our mower did it, uh, killing it. Um, and just to note, this year, um, in May, early, we seeded um, winter wheat and alfalfa back into these, these strips. Uh, so we did, ha in each of the seed mixes, we did half of it back into winter wheat, half of it back into alfalfa. Um, and before the alfalfa was planted, those strips were sprayed with Roundup to kind of control some of the weeds and so we did have some persisting cover crops and things that came back up uh, things such as our peas you can see very visibly uh, some phacelia came back up our sandpoint came back our buckwheat came back and then we had a few odds and ends of other species that weren't real prevalent but they still are there uh, so it is kind of expected that things such as sandpoint are kind of come back they are perennial but a lot of them are annual uh, species came back from seed, more than likely. Um, so we're kind of looking to the future. This was, like I said, just pretty much to see if we could get the cover crops to grow here. Now that we know that they will grow, and just for proof of that, when we go over that direction, you'll see them. We planted the same seed mixes back again. So you'll be able to see how those came up or how they're establishing right now. Uh, but in the future, we're kind of trying to see how cover crops fit into both dry land and irrigated sector, irrigated settings in this area, um, how they play a role in range and pasture renovation. For example, if you have an old hay field, 
um, the alfalfa is starting to get pretty weakened. Um, can you use cover crops to come back in and, and renovate your soil and provide a, a substantial amount of forage until you're ready to go back in and seed? Cover crops can be used to um, boost soil health. Um, and so we're trying to balance the soil health benefits with the economic be benefits or lack thereof. It's yet to be determined, obviously. Um, but we're, we're trying to put all these pieces together and see our cover crops really a doable thing um, for producers. Um, and if they are, how can we implement them over a two or three year time span? Um, so if you walk out across these, you can see how some of the seed mix has fared. I invite you to, to walk through and, and look at those. And just kind of one last note, you'll notice that there's stands where the winter wheat came up taller. That's actually where we didn't plant anything. So that's an odd question to start this research off with. Why is it growing better in the areas that didn't have the cover crops rather than in the cover crops? So if you have any questions, happy to answer them or uh, answer them now or, or later on throughout the tour. When did you uh, put down the seeds for the cover crops? So the cool season mixes were planted on the 15th of May uh, last year, 2017. And the warm season mixes were planted on the 27th believe of May last year as well. Just a couple weeks away. Yeah, not, not too far apart. 26. 26th, one day off. We probably would have liked to have gotten them out earlier, but we were wet spring again last year, kind of like we were